Hey, welcome back to the Astrology of Things. I'm your host and certified astrologer, Sheena. And in today's episode, I wanted to go over the meaning of the second house and briefly go over uh, what some of the planets in the second house would mean. So the second house is the area of life that focuses on activities pertaining to our sustenance. Uh, so this house speaks to how the native is sustained on a physical level. So our sustenance is our livelihood. It's our survival and how we support our life force and vitality. So we support our lives through various forms of sustenance, um, such as through the air we breathe, the food we eat, the water we drink, and even the shelter we need to protect us. And in order to get these things, at least in today's modern society, we need mo we need money or something of value to exchange in order to receive these forms of sustenance. So depending on what point in history you were born, that sustenance is going to look different, of course. So long ago, you may have um, you may have not even needed money to buy food but maybe you needed to own a fishing net so that you could catch fish to eat but the only way to get the fishing net was to use the resources you had at your disposal so maybe that was you know pulling together some sticks that you found on the ground um, and somehow you learned how to weave plants together to form into a net um, and so you would have needed your own and natural gifts and talents to turn these resources that you had at your disposal into a form of value so that is why the second house is strongly tied to money and finances it's tied to our resources, our tangible valuables, as well as our intangible valuables, which come through our natural gifts and talents. So the latter, our inherent gifts and talents, are at the basis of our own unique offerings to this world. So once we're born, you know, we have a set of... Uh, processes or things only we could can do like no one can rep replicate or duplicate how we do things so it's a part of what you know makes us valuable outside of money and outside of what others determine our value to be. And it's also what we can use to turn into value so that others can use it um, or so that we can ourselves use it. <laughs> um, so thinking back to the example of the fishing net, once that net is created once the fishing net is created the person can either sell the fishing net to make an income or they can reuse the fishing net to catch more fish and then they can sell the fish to others so in either way the value is being exchange for another form of value so we're giving something and receiving something and lastly this house also represents how we value ourselves and how we determine our own self worth so I wanted to just do a quick run through of potential ways the planets in the second house could play out. So just note that 
This doesn't take into consideration the zodiac sign or the aspects that the planets are making to other planets. All right, so starting off with the sun, sun in the second house, this may point to toward you uh, someone who shows off their valuables or shows off or likes to flaunt the money that they make. They put this on display. Um, this person may like to acquire shiny things, things that are perceived to be, you know, amazing and extravagant. Um, this could also point towards someone who has a, a high self-esteem and high self-worth. With the moon in the second house, this may point toward um, someone being emotionally tied to their valuables and their money. So this may be someone who um, likes to spend money when they are in an emotional state. Um, and this could even point towards someone who has natural inherent int intuitive gifts. And it could also point towards someone who may need um, emotional support. A lot of emotional support. Um, Mercury in the second house. This may point toward someone who has natural gifts and talents around marketing um, and being able to write and speak and communicate in general. This could even point towards someone who owns um, a lot of books. Mars in the second house, this could point towards someone who's driven um, to acquire valuables or driven to make a lot of money. Um, this could be someone who has valuables that are very sharp. Um, for example, this could be someone who collect special weapons or uh, likes to collect swords or knives um, this person may own a lot of machines or some sort of machine uh, and they may even be um, have natural talents around motivating people to do things um, if you want to learn more about Mars and motivation definitely check out my the astrology of motivation video all right so Venus in the second house this um, may point towards someone who values things that activate the senses so liking to acquire things that may be fluff fluffy or, or furry or um, liking to buy things that smell really nice or things that taste really good. Um, Venus in the second may point towards someone who loves eating foods, uh, sweet foods, desserts and candies, um, and could point towards someone who's naturally talented around cooking and the culinary arts. Um, so Saturn in the second house, there could be some blockages toward making money um, and delays around receiving money. So this could be on both a smaller scale or a larger scale. Um, and then this could point towards someone who's, who has a lot of valuables that may be old or, um, valuables that were acquired from old, older people. Uh, Jupiter in the second house, um, this person could have a lot of valuable things that expand the mind. Uh, this may be in the form of books, for example. Um, this could point towards someone who is able to make a lot of money and, and bring in a lot of finances and assets into their position into their possession um, this could um, at the same time point towards someone who's a big spender um, and even could point towards someone who has 
um, a lot of inherent talents uh, around the wisdom and knowledge that they have to share and teach. Um, in terms of food, this could be someone who really enjoys eating foods from uh, cultures outside of their native culture. Uranus in the second house. Um, this person may... So Uranus in the second house, this person may, may um, acquire and lose money or valuables in an un unexpected or unconventional ways, or this could point towards someone who has a lot of gadgets that are hooked up to the internet. And in addition, may have a lot of um, natural gifts that are untraditional or go against uh, social norms. Neptune in the second house. So uh, this could be someone who owns musical instruments or pieces of art um, that have a lot of value. Uh, this person may have a lot of inherent spiritual gifts and they, they may even be able to um, manifest money or make money in magical ways. Um, additionally, this person may make money through hidden or mysterious ways as well. Um, and then this individual may like to intake a lot of water or in general, just any liquid substances. With Pluto in the second house, this person may have a way of manipulating people or, um, I don't want to say people, but in general, manipulating or having subtle ways, subtle manipulative, manipulative ways in which they acquire money or valuables. Um, on the other hand, this could also mean that this person just likes to be in control of their finances um, and in control of things that they value. Um, to sum it up, I'd say I think I'm thinking of the term uh, financial manipulation. Um, all right, and then lastly, Chiron in the second house. Um, this may point towards someone who has wounds surrounding their self-worth and value. Um, and this person may not have have confidence in their value, in, in their inherent gifts and talents. So, so there's some wounding um, that they need to work through here. All right, so that's all I have for you today on the second house. So I hope that gives you a better um, overview and understanding of the second house. All right, so until next time.